Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me. This is Catherine Gallagher. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you're joining me at. Thank you. I'd like to talk about SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder, and some of the myths that come across this particular condition. SAD or Seasonal Affective Disorder is recognised as a form of depression. In the UK, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence recommends that the seasonal affective disorder, sometimes known as SAD, is treated the same as any other form of depression. SAD is often associated with the winter months, although it can happen out with this time. Usually, it starts in autumn through winter and then we feel better in spring. However, in fact, some have symptoms in the summer and feel better in the winter time. Seasonal affective disorder comes and goes in season as a pattern. Symptoms of SAD vary with each person. Some withdraw. However, others can go through heightened feelings of high levels of happiness and energy and socialise, but then they feel depressed, low and down. Low moods that are ongoing, tearful, sad, low confidence, feeling of worthlessness or self-esteem is low. People often talk to me about their emotions of feeling guilt or despair, anxiety and stress, feeling less social, tiredness, fatigued, very low energy and low motivation. I'm so tired, I feel I can't help it. I drop off to sleep during the daytime. I struggle to get up in the mornings. I can't wake up. I'm craving those carbs. I've put on so much weight. I can't be bothered. I've got no sex drive. My libido's low and I'm finding it hard to concentrate. These symptoms affect people differently, severely to moderately to mild. It depends on an individual. It can impact on day-to-day living and quality of life. If you recognise any of these symptoms and you are considering that perhaps SAD is something that you are experiencing, get a doctor's assessment if you recognise these. Talk to a doctor. A GP or a doctor will often ask about your mood, your lifestyle. They'll ask questions about changes in the habits, the patterns, your thinking, what you do, what you would normally do, what's changed. And they'll want to know if it's linked to particular seasons and patterns of seasons. They'll ask you questions about your nutrition and your sleeping habits. Is your quality of life different? Are you sleeping different? Are you craving carbs? What's your appetite like? They'll ask you, are there things you're no longer able to do? Or are you restricted in doing things? They might also want to know about your family history of depression. Or is there any recent life events that have happened that have been challenging? It's a good idea to make a note of these beforehand so that when you go in to speak to the doctor you have a record, a notebook before you go so that you can talk about and summarise to your doctor and give that full history and you have it to hand. There's nothing worse, you go into a doctor and then when you leave after the consultation you think, I wish I had told the doctor this, I haven't mentioned that. The consultation's already passed. It's important the doctor has everything to hand so they can decide what's the best treatment and be able to make that decision. For a doctor to be able to give the right diagnosis is sad. Depression happens at the same time each year over a two-year period. I'll say that again. To get a diagnosis of sad, depression happens at the same time each year 
for over two years. And the periods of depression are followed by times where you no longer feel low depressed. So it is a good idea over that period of time, for a two year period anyway, to keep a track of your moods, your energy, your nutrition, your exercise, the sleep, all these factors I've mentioned. So that when you go to see the doctor, they have a good history over a couple of years. SAS cause is not fully known. However, there is thought to be a direct link to low or reduced exposure to sunlight, affecting the part of the brain, the hypothalamus, working optimally. The thinking is that the effects and it affects the right production of the melatonin. That's a hormone that makes you feel sleepy. With SADS, the production of melatonin is higher and it's a higher level. The hormone serotonin, which is, if you remember from previous episodes, that's our mood hormone. But it also affects our appetite and sleep, as well as our mood. And with the lack of exposure to sunlight with SADS, the level of serotonin may drop, which is what could affect moods, leading to low moods and perhaps to depression. Circadian rhythm, otherwise known as our body's internal clock. Sunlight is used by our body as one of the functions, such as waking up. And lower levels of sunlight could affect the function and lead to the symptom of SAD. There's also, as I mentioned earlier, the possibility that some are more vulnerable or susceptible and predisposed to SAD. It could be, as it may be found in some cases to run families. The treatments of SAD. Well, the first thing we often look at is lifestyle. Getting out and about, walking in nature, cycling or rambling, getting out as much and having exercise. And when I talk about being out in sunlight, do it safely. If you need to use protective factor, then do so. Better to have short walks outdoors, to walk to work, Walk to the local shops or walk around your garden if you have one. Exercise regularly. The cardio, the dancing, weights, skipping. Whatever you do, make sure that you enjoy it. It's thought that we should do exercise five times a week. But remember, if you've listened to previous exercise episodes or episodes that touch on different life change and lifestyles. You'll have heard me talking about neat exercises where we extend and expend energy just by doing the chores. That's part of what we do when we do exercise. You might be hoovering, you might be dusting, you might be moving things around, decluttering. You're extending energy and you're having exercise. These are called neat exercises. But it's also important we do other forms of exercise, whether it's cardio, whether it's weights, whether it's using an exercise band and doing stretching exercises, Pilates, yoga, ballet, (laughs) dancing, whatever you choose to do. The more that we enjoy it, the more we'll pursue and continue with it and set a routine. Nutrition. The food sources of vitamin D, particularly vitamin D3, and omega fats, omega 3 fats, the fishy oils, the salmon, the tuna, the egg yolks, flax seeds, walnuts, hemp. They're often Eat carbs for dinner in the evening as sad is often worse at the at that time in evenings. So it's a good idea to eat your carbs later on at dinner time. It might be lentils, potatoes, brown rice. These are better carbs for us rather than snacking on things that are 
high in sugar. Carbohydrates promote production of serotonin, remember? That hormone for our emotions, for our moods. The feel-good hormone. And it is thought a reason why people with SADS crave carbs. Snack on the healthier carbs to reduce the sugar rush and the cravings for sugar. Avoiding or cutting back in things like donuts and sweets is a good idea. B vitamins are essential for brain function and mood boosting, serotonin and dopamine. We can get that and access that through our leafy greens, spinach, kale, fruits, veg, lean meats, the fish, the nuts, the low dairy fat, olive oil, dark chocolate, rich in flavonoids. It might be your fruits with your bananas, your berries or your oats or avocados. The kai seeds and the flax seeds. Reduce your stress. Remember, stress levels are important to monitor. Good stress, e-stress is essential to get us up and get us about. But when we are overstressed and have worry thoughts and too much stress, we know that it negatively impacts on us and impacts on our immune system. So practice those mindfulness, meditation, energy affirmations, do energy work, tapping, whatever works for you. Find gratitudes, a gratitude journal. Do stress management tools. Remember, get your daily dose, your dopamine, your oxytocin, your serotonin, your dorphin. Other treatments, as well as getting out into nature and exercising and looking at your nutrition and managing stress. There's also light therapy, Lux. Always make sure you purchase a medically approved light box for light therapy and ensure that you have no medical condition that would contraindicate the use of this particular device. Check with a doctor. Remember, my favourite saying with anything to do with Something like medical situations, if in doubt, check it out. I say that all the time to my clients. If in doubt, check it out. The Lux Light Therapy Box. It simulates sunlight exposure via a lamp. 30 minutes to an hour every morning opens up your environment. Make it light and bright. Set your lights. I have a Wi-Fi light that simulates bright light, daylight. There are daylight light, lights and lamps that you can have. And my Wi-Fi light simulates daylight. That's another option for you that you could access too. Think about being creative. Think out the box. Sit near the window so you get more exposure to the sunlight and natural lighting. Change your environment. Make sure your environment is open and open to connecting to daylight lighting. The thinking is the daylight lamp which simulates the sunlight that is lacking and the light by the window improves the symptoms of SAD, by encouraging the brain hypothalamus to reduce production of the melatonin, remember, that makes you sleep and increases the production of serotonin, the hormone that affects our moods for the better. Sometimes people talk to me about a sunrise alarm clock that lightens the room and the daylight window. And we can get devices I remember staying over at a conference and I was given a remote control and I was told if you want to get access to more sunlight or daylight, if you're getting up really early, then you can access the facility and the button that says daylight 
And I was quite puzzled by that because I've never seen that facility before, certainly not in a hotel. They also said to me, we have blinds that can darken the room, but we also have access on our windows to bring in the light. And I thought, oh, I wonder how that happens. So I started playing around with the remote control (laughs) and I set the alarm for daylight. I had to catch a flight and I had to get up fairly early and it was quite dark. And I suddenly found about four o'clock in the morning, there was light, soft music came on and I set the alarm for four o'clock. And this music came on, the blinds suddenly opened, the windows changed colour and suddenly the room lit up with daylight and that was what the daylight remote function did. It lifted the room and the environment of the room and it brought the light in and don't ask me how it did it, right? But it's probably to do with the Wi-Fi technology that I spoke about earlier. But it was really cool. And I remember thinking, wow, this is really bright. But it made it a lot easier for me to get up, trust me. And I I felt quite invigorated and quite energised because it was done very subtly. It wasn't suddenly I was asleep and suddenly it was really bright. And it was a very natural transition. The soft music, the lighting suddenly started coming on and it was very softly toned and then suddenly it was bright daylight. And... And then obviously I got up and got ready and I, and I went out for my flight and it was really dark outside. And I was thinking, wow, that, that was a really, really lovely way to wake up. I thought I'd do that more often. But one other thing we can do is connections, is to make sure we're connecting with family and friends and explaining to us and also to them. Understanding and showing ourselves com- compassion. You know, if we have you know, struggles with and are challenged by depressive moods and sad is the reason why. It's important we tell people that will listen, understand and show us support. So when we connect to people and we explain to them that will listen and support us, we then don't feel we're doing it alone. We also feel that people understand and they will be able to help and connect with us and support us. And if we're struggling to learn or to know how to do that, as well as connecting, maybe with family and friends, we might decide to talk to a professional to get some strategies, some skills and some tools. We might talk to a CBT or a psychotherapist, or a counsellor. A counsellor to talk things through, a psychotherapist to maybe understand, you know, where it's coming from and delve deeper. A CBT to look for strategies and tools to understand why we think and do what we do. Other treatments, of course, could be medication. Always feel free to talk to a pharmacist. A pharmacist has the experience and understanding and can be able to suggest and direct you. Remember, light therapy is usually not prescribed. Usually we have to access it through online. Always as a member, I said, make sure that you access a proper device, a medically approved light box. But you can also consult with a pharmacist and get guidance. They can signpost you to recommendation. You can talk about treatments and they can signpost you too. They might also direct and suggest to you about vitamin D and about the B vitamins as well. Always check with a pharmacist or a doctor, if in doubt. Always check things out. If you're unsure about what exercise is best, Consult with a specialist or professional that understands the exercise that would be best for you to do. There are lots of professionally qualified, trained exercise physiotherapists or trainers 
that have the background. And if you're looking for medication, often a doctor will think about the SSRs, the Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, which is taking me back to my nursing. (laughs) And often many clients will come to me and they'll talk about their medication they're on. And the medications such as SSRs, your antidepressants, they can take four to six weeks to fully take effect, Mm. but you will start gradually before then, start feeling the effects. Sometimes you might have side effects. It's important to talk to your doctor. And remember, if you are going to be taking medication, make sure that you're not taking medication that you have concerns or side effects from. If you do have side effects, consult with your doctor. Sometimes people will be advised because they get sad to have more sunlight and exposure to sunlight. Always make sure that your doctor's aware of the medication you're on. For instance, some antibiotics, exposure to sunlight might cause complications. So it's always important to talk to your doctor and get a proper diagnosis. And make sure if you're on any medication that exposure to sunlight isn't something that's contraindicated because you're on medication. Always check it out. If in doubt, check it out. Often medication will start at the beginning of a season. Most antidepressants are often prescribed over an extensive period of time, three to six months or longer. Mm -hmm. So it's important to be fully apprised of what medication, if you're prescribed medication, how long you would be on it for and the purpose of it. And make sure that it's the right route for you by consulting with your doctor. And of course, there are other treatments. There's complementary treatments. Some people will talk to me about getting massage and hypnotherapy and acupuncture. All of these should be done through proper assessments, proper guidance and with properly trained professionals. That is my discussion about SAD. Hopefully it's been helpful to talk it through. It's my thinking and it's where, I guess, if you do have seasonal affective disorder or if you're thinking that perhaps you might have, if you do want to know for sure, get a consultation with a doctor to get diagnosed. But think of the factors I've talked about and start recording the lifestyle factors that I've talked about. Because it helps your doctor over an extended period of time, particularly over two years, if you've been recording your nutrition and exercise, energy and your moods, if you've been recording all these really important life factors, then it helps your doctor to be able to give a proper, robust diagnosis. Thanks for listening. Hopefully that's helped with your information some facts and some myths about SAD. Until next time, good mental health.